So we've started for the last two weeks. We've been having prayer meetings in the upper rooms. If you haven't attended any, make sure you attend the one for this Wednesday where we'll be praying concerning build your church, Lord. And we'll be praying from Acts chapter 1 to chapter 5. And um, there's the next one coming on the 28th. Um, But today we're going to continue our series on the Holy Spirit, and we'll be talking about the fruit fruit of the Spirit, but the theme, the the title of this one is Be Fruitful and Multiply. Fortunately for you, you've got me for two weeks, Um, so I will will start, and wherever I'm allowed to stop, I will stop. David has clearly told me that I've got 25 minutes, and he's going to turn me off. So, um, just watch this space. But in the auditorium this morning, I've got David, Bruna, and I've got my family as well. And I've got Pedro that I haven't seen for the last 16 weeks. It was a good reunion seeing these faces again. I'm looking forward to seeing you all as and when it's possible to. Let's pray. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you, O God. We bless your name. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you adoration. Thank you, O God, because this is the day that you have made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Lord, for how you've kept us. Thank you, Lord, for food on our tables, a roof over our head, and clothes on our back. Father, we bless your name. Lord, the scripture says that the entrance of your word gives light. And he gives understanding to the simple. Lord, this morning, we ask for light and we ask for understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, wherever we are watching from, I ask that you meet each and every one at the points of our needs in the name of Jesus. Lord, bless me that I might be a blessing. Speak your word expressly in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Like I said, we've been... We've been on this series for a while now, and um, Bruna preached on peace last week. Craig preached on joy the week before, and um, it's been interesting to see what God is doing in and through us. But this week, like I said, you've got me for two weeks, and we'll be preaching, we'll be talking about be fruitful and multiply. Let's go to our key scripture, which is in Galatians chapter 5, from verse 22 to 23. Galatians chapter 5 from verse 22 to 23. This was Paul talking to the church in the region of Galatia. And he said, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. He said, against such, there is no law. When Paul was talking to this church, he was addressing a few issues. One of the things that was rampant during that time was the fact that some believers were emphasizing the fact that for you to be a Christian, you need to do other things other than what the Bible says. So it's like, you know, for you to be a good Christian, you need to, you know, to be circumcised again or you know, to be circumcised if you're not a Jew or other things that were the law stipulated. Paul was saying to them that, look, the fruit of the Spirit, and I want you to see that, you know, from that translation and many other translations, it emphasizes the fact that the fruit of the Spirit, not the fruits of the Spirit. If you read any translation, it emphasizes it's the fruit of the Spirit, which is, which, is, um, which is an interesting one. But most of the time, we refer to it as the fruits of the Spirit, when really it's not that. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. So there is no law. There is nothing else you need to do. If you can bear this fruit, then then you're a true Christian. That's basically what Paul was saying in that scripture. And when you... We've been, like I said, we've been on this series for a while. So what I wouldn't do, I'm not going to dwell on the month of February. We 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 dwelt on love all through that period. Um, Brunner has sp- spoken about peace. 
Craig spoke about joy, so I'm not going to go there. But Bible scholars have divided that nine gifts or those nine fruits of the Spirit into three groups. The first one is love, joy, peace, and that is, like, that is our attitude towards God. Love, joy, peace is our attitude towards God. Patience, kindness, good, patience, kindness, goodness is our social relationships. And faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control has been classified into what is called our Christian conduct. So our attitude towards God, our social relationships, and our Christian conduct. But when you think about it very well, the fruit of the Spirit is not something that you see in everyone. It's the expectation, but that's not what you see all the time. If we go to John chapter 15, verse 1 to 8, John chapter 15, verse 1 to 8, John chapter 15, verse 1 to 8. He says, I am the true vine. This is Jesus talking now. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more, more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Listen to this, verse 4. It says, Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the tree and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it shall be done for you. By this is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so prove to be my disciple. Fruit of the Spirit is a product of abiding, not existing. The fruit of the Spirit is a product of you abiding in the vine, abiding in the faith. So you can be a Christian, you could have been a Christian for how many, more, how many years that you want to call it, 20, 50, 60, 80 if you're not abiding in the vine, if you're not abiding in the faith, if you're not presenting yourself, the fruit of the Spirit will not be seen in our lives. The fruit of the Spirit, like I said, is a product, is a result of an action or a process. The fruit of the Spirit, for us to produce the fruit of the Spirit, for us to be fruit, fruitful, it is a product it is a, pro, is, is, is a result of an action or a process. And if you read Acts chapter 4 from verse 1 to about 13, the Bible tells us about, about how Peter and John were brought to the Sanhedrin. And they, they were told not to preach. And in verse 13, the Bible says that the rulers at the time got to realize that these guys were just Ordinary guys, ordinary men, but the reason why they were able to speak with so much courage is because what they have been with Jesus. Let's go there. Let me read what. Let me read it to you the way it, it, it says, so that I'm not quoting out of context. Four thirteen. It says, "Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were what uneducated common men, they were what astonished." And they recognize that they had been with Jesus. It's not the fact that they have followed Jesus. It's not the fact that they have been hanging around church. It's not the fact that they claim to be Christian. It's the fact that they have been with Jesus. The fruit of the Spirit is not, it's not something that you get because 
you are a Christian. It's something that you get, that, you, that is manifested in your life, that is produced in your life as a result of you abiding in the vine, as a result of you presenting yourself on a daily basis in whatsoever way you abide in the vine. You know, there's so many things that have been presented to us in our current climate, as we are now. You know, you can listen to this message and turn your channel and go to another channel, and you can have another service that, you, that will feed your spirit. You can listen to any podcast. There's so many ways of abiding in our current climate. But the point is, you can't, you can't, the fruit is not, it's not, like, I think it was um, Mike that said it, that um, gifts are given and um, fruits grow, something like that. The, the, the fruits come as a result of you abiding. It is not something that is given out free, you know, free like that. And it takes God. It takes, like John 15 says, it's if you, you are in me and I in you, and you will bear most, much fruit. And my challenge is to us this morning is like, as we continue this walk of faith, as we go on, that we will continue to abide. Every opportunity we have to abide, we will, you know, we will take that opportunity on. We've got prayer meeting this week. Make sure you turn up because every opportunity you have to abide, every opportunity you have for you to present yourself that the fruit of the Spirit might come out of you. Don't take it for granted. If you look at the world we live in now, I mean, the fact that we can't even come together, is a, it's, um, it's, it's, it, tells, it's, it says a lot. I've, I've been a Christian for a while. I haven't seen a time where we can't come together. I can't remember that time. I can't remember, if, I can't remember that kind of season. And the world that we're li- living now is crying out for fruit bearers. It's crying out for people that will show forth, people that have been abiding in the vine, to reflect the glory of God. People that will be able to to display love, joy, and peace. People that in their social relationships, they are patient, they are kind, and they are good. People in their Christian conduct that will show faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The world that we are in now is longing for such. If you go to Isaiah chapter 60 from verse 1 to 3, Isaiah chapter 60 from verse 1 to 3, if the scripture is not being displayed on the screen, blame me. It's not David because David asked me to give him the scriptures, and I did. But you know, because um, because it's not a pre-recorded scene, I was still having scriptures coming to me. God was still speaking to me. Over the night, so some so some things have changed um, from when I sent the scriptures to David. I've got my family in the room as well, so it's not only David, um, Bruna, and um, Pedro. So I'm preaching to my household as well. Okay, Isaiah chapter 60, from verse one to three, it says, "Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen." Upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the people. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The nation, and nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. What we are saying is the world that we are living now is crying out for believers with fruits of the Spirit that will show our attitude towards God, that will reflect our social relationship, and that will show our Christian conduct. When you read that passage very well, it says, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. It says, For behold, darkness shall cover the earth. When you look around this so much gloom around. Bruno was reading the stats around unemployment. On what was that? Was that Wednesday or yeah, Thursday? And it's quite. It's it's. It looks like doomsday. You know, when you think about the projection around mental health, it's like it's not good. And this is what the scripture is saying: it "says Behold, darkness shall cover the earth, 
and, and thick darkness the people. But what does it say? It says, but the Lord shall arise upon you. You can't produce the fruit of yourself. I can't say to you that I want to be patient. I want to be patient. It's not something that I can produce by myself. It takes me going to God. It takes me the constantly, constantly appearing before God. And God will do that work in me. I can't say to you I want to have self-control. My will will only take me thus far. It takes God to do that work. He says, but the Lord will arise upon you and his glory shall be seen upon you. And listen to this. It says, and nations shall come to your light and the kings to the brightness of your rising. When you begin to manifest, when you begin to produce fruit, naturally you will multiply. Naturally there will be multiplication. A church that is full of the fruit of the Spirit is not a struggle. That church will begin to see multiplication. A family that is full of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, it will not be a struggle. You'll be at, you, will, you will attract people unto yourself. And that's what the Bible is saying. That be fruitful and multiply. If you're looking for multiplication and you are not giving yourself to the place where you'll be fruitful, it's an effort in futility. You won't go far. But the Bible says that. It says, my, it says but the Lord will arise upon you. I was talking to my friend, my childhood friend. We've been friends. Well, he's, he's my childhood friend. He's, he, he works for one of the big American companies. Um, big, big American airline companies, and he said to me, all of a sudden, he's been there for over 20 years, they just told him that you've got to go, you know. I was talking to another friend, he said, well, they've cut down their hours by 40, so, no, no, sorry, by, by 40%, so it's like, is, is it that you take the pay cut, or you go, and that is the current world we live in now, and we don't even know what it's going to be like in the next few months, but beloved, God is calling us to a place, as a church, God is calling us as individuals to a place where we begin to seek his face like never before. We are beginning to, you know, de derive pleasure in every opportunity we have to be fruitful so that the world might see our attitude towards God, so that the world might see our social relationships, so that the world might see our Christian conduct, so that love, joy, and peace will be a natural thing that comes out of us so that we will not be snapping at each other. Our kindness and the goodness that comes as a result of you abiding in the vine will be seen by all. We will not struggle. We will not struggle. We will not struggle. We'll be fruitful and we will multiply in our time and in our season in the mighty name of Jesus. Because everything that is happening currently if you think about it, everything that is happening currently in our world is trying to take our focus away from God. It's trying to steal the love and the, and the joy and the peace that God wants to give us. Everything that is happening now is trying to make our social relationships not to, to prosper. Everything that is happening now is trying to make our, so, our, our Christian conduct not to be what it's supposed to be. But that is not going to be our portion. In our time, in our season, upon our watch, irrespective of what is happening around, we, you and I, will be fruitful and we will multiply. We will see multiplication in our time. The same way we are the, the disciples in, in, in the book of Acts. Bruna referred to it on, 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 on Thursday. In just one service, just one appearance, because they had been with Jesus, thousands were added to the church. Because they had been with Jesus, because they had been fruitful, multiplication became a natural thing. Let nothing distract us. Let nothing distract us. Let nothing distract us. Let nothing distract us. No matter what the noise is around you, no matter what people are saying around you. The Bible tells us about in, 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 in 2 Kings chapter 2, when Elisha, was to, when Elijah was being taken, and the sons of the prophets were saying to Elisha, do you know that today your, your master will be taken from you? He said, shh, I know, I know, I know. And that is what is happening. There's so much talk around. There's so, much, there's so many voices going on around. But it takes a man that knows 
And you only know by abiding in the vine. You only know what is happening by abiding in the vine. And my challenge to you is that silent everything. Silent everything. Silence everything. And seek the presence of God. Like never before. Seek the presence of God. No one will do it for you. Your dad will not do it for you. Your husband will not do it for you. Your pastor will not do it for you. Or whatever title you want to call him, he will not do it for you. It has to be you. It's a personal thing. It's a family thing. It's a personal thing. It's something that you have to do by yourself. You have to be fruitful and you will see multiplication. In Jesus' name. I've got three minutes left. The plan is to go into kindness today. That is, for you to experience multiplication, you've got to be fruitful, and it's something that you have to do by yourself. <sighs> okay. Like I said, we've, we've spoken about love, joy, peace. The second tr- um, is our social relationship, and I was going to talk about kindness. I'll probably just start briefly, and I'll continue next week, and I'll finish on the other ones. Um, the word kindness, in the, the Greek word for kindness, is translated as, as, as an excellence of character. It's not just being good. It's not just you being kind. It's you going beyond that because there's only so far. Because it's the fruit of the Spirit, there's only so much you can do in your flesh. You know, you, you can be kind to people as being kind, but when it is of the Spirit, that's the one where you can... It, you will go the extra mile. You don't care what it costs you. You will do it. Somebody once says that the ability is, when you say somebody is kind and is manifesting the fruit of the Spirit, it's not just you doing it, but when you do it against all kinds of hostility, when you do it even when it is not convenient for you, that is when you're a true Christian. Um, I was going to talk about um, Jesus. Okay, you know what? I'll stop now. Let's pray. So next week, I will continue from kindness. Um, I will use Jesus. I will give you two or three instances of how Jesus will, is the, he epitomizes all the fruit of the Spirit. There's nobody that you can compare to. Everything that Jesus did was all driven by the fruit of the Spirit. And I'll also refer to Mother Teresa, or Mother Teresa, and then we will probably go into Um, a few other examples of the fruit of the Spirit. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. We exalt your name. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us that it is you and you alone that can produce the fruit that the world is crying for. Lord, everything that has distracted us thus far, we say, Jehovah God, those things will not prosper in the name of Jesus. We will set our eyes as a flint. We will set everything in order that we might seek your face, that we put everything aside and we will be fruitful in our time and in our season in the name of Jesus. Upon our watch, we will not be talkers, but we will be, but we will be doers in the name of Jesus. Sir. We will seek you with everything that we have in the mighty name of Jesus. Sir. Father, thank you, O God, for we shall see multiplication in the name of Jesus. Sir. In our time, dry bones will rise again in the name of Jesus. Sir. In our time, on our watch, Lord, the numbers will increase in the name of Jesus. Sir. We will not lack food on our table. We will not lack clothes on our back. We will not lack a roof over our head. In the name of Jesus, sir. Father, we will see the miraculous in our season. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a blessed week. God bless you.